I wish they made pharmaceuticals illegal today. This poem was originally recorded the day after he passed away. Aim. Take a deep breath. Let the air fill your lungs with life. Hold it for a moment. Let only half of it out. Focus and slowly squeeze the trigger. Granddad, you've never heard of this poem. You will never feel this thank you, caressing your eardrums, turning well-weathered spine, clasping your ribs with a death grip like that final hug goodbye with the final you, signifying the bipolar smile of a boy that was taught to love like a gunshot. Take aim. Focus. When in a relationship with someone with bipolar disorder, it is key to remember, yet so easy to forget, that the letter U, refrigerator magnet, can also effortlessly be substituted with a lowercase n. And better yet, with the assistance of periods, which can also be substituted with the dots of two lowercase eyes, it can all be used to erect a face. Looking at you, displaying a mood you may not have intended to create, to my dearest grandmother, you, smiling. Taught me how to love and flip it. Even when you were frowning, you still taught me how to love. So flip it. You are also why I hate them. Them being my overly constricting genes, not denim but genetic, yet still blue in the kisser from holding secrets like breath. Making me want to trickle crimson from their zipper locket ways, mentally screaming stop every time I heard them prematurely talk about my granddad. As if he'd already punched his last time card. Replace that overly used couch broken into perfection for a ready to be broken in casket to finally be rested in. As I'm well nestled in the memories, still comfort blanketing my mental from seeing him magician my grandmother's frown into blissful happiness as if his fingertip was a magic wand and her lips simply as easy to alter as an alphabet magnet alone in, always waiting for the you, magic man, to turn it around, as that is what would instill the memory of him to be everlasting. Not focusing on the eyes, I can never see his gaze sunsetting over the years, only picturing eyes creating smiles from watching him rope swing, uppercasing smiles on our faces through all of life's up and downs. He capitalized eyes, not focusing on the dots, but yet he cultivated a pupil or two. Young Houdini's focused on creating smiles from and He always turned around, we needed it most. But now I take a deep breath, I hold it for a moment, let only it out. I find it so hard to keep wanting, striving, working towards being you, that at times I just want to stay unprepared for this funeral tidal wake of memories, with my you being shattered into a past of window pane, review mirroring my smiles, and my grandmother being greatly concerned, inquiring if the reason I now push away women is because of her or because of my family, because I can only smile for so long before I say, well, yeah, I can hear you all forgetting him. Is that love? Is that what we strive a lifetime for? The until death do you part's true meaning. Becoming skinny jeans seen, seeing vows, turning into a lifestyle, turning into just another trend. Making jeans with a G that much easier to rip in a pair of seams. I think they symbolize my loved ones hold at sea. I'm only letting half of it out, half of us now. Realize that bipolar and depression genetically run in our family, but so does pushing people away. Through life, we have shoved pills into gaps, into these little empty pockets within ourselves. But how many capsules does it take to truly feel regret? And why use that when you can get your hands dirty by getting to the bottom of yourself or others by digging it apart? I smile when I remember my grandfather teaching me to love over Remington pump action 3030 rifle. He says, aim, let the air fill your lungs with life. But all I can do is picture leftover refrigerator magnets and fingertip magic wands because his face in my mind triggers too much of an explosion in myself to harness. So I embrace the memory of his hands and hold it for a moment, letting only half of it out. But I now slowly pull the trigger on life decisions, especially in regards to love. I will remember how his loved ones treated him like a quickly fading memory, a bullet so easy to push away and let that boom 
resonate over eardrums passed down that should have felt me saying thank you a long time ago. I'll vow to treat my child like the biological dad I never had. See, granddad, you, smiling, taught me how to love and flip it. Even when you were frowning, you still taught me how to love. So granddad, you, you'll never hear this poem. You'll never feel this thank you caressing your eardrums, turning well-weathered spine, clasping your ribs with a death grip like that final hug goodbye. But I promise, before time fades and your grandson is settling into black, I will thank you, magic man, for teaching me how to perform life's hardest trick, to love the right way, unconditionally, before it's boom, gone.